All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the robot teach pendant. Now, for each version of robots, it doesn't matter if you're using a FANUC or ABB or Universal, they have some sort of teach pendant in which you're going to use to interface with the robot to maneuver and manipulate the robot movement and positions. So with our FANUC robotics, there are usually three different versions of the teach pendant. There's the R30IA, R30IA Plus, and then R30IB. Now there's not much different between the A Plus and IB uh, besides using interface with the internet and also different graphical user interfaces and touch screens uh, that allow for faster movement and faster programming of the actual robot itself. So the basic parts of the teach pendant uh, are going to be you're always going to have an on off switch and what this does is it activates or deactivates the teach pendant. So when you're running the robot in automatic mode you're going to have the teach pendant off. When you're training the robot you're going to have it on. The other place is going to be the emergency stop. The emergency stop will shut off or kill any movement of the robot no matter where you're at with the teach pendant or where the robot's at in the actual program. The area in which you're actually going to see the program or the movement is going to be your screen. You can split these up to three different screens. So you can see the program on one side and you can see the robot 3D in the other side or just different menus that you can set up. So it's a very good interface that you can work with. Then you have the numerical pad that allows you to add numbers, change numbers, pick different registries um, and different options along with that. On the right hand side is going to be your jog keys and you're going to see there's a multitude of different jog keys. You're going to be your X coordinates, the Y, Z, and then the manipulation upon that with the rotations. And then there's two other additional areas. So if your robot's mounted on a track or if there's some sort of end of arm tooling that has some movement as well, you can additionally add those uh, keys for that function. Now any time that you're going to move the robot, also known as jog the robot, you have to hold shift and then press the button to move where you want it to go. On the actual other parts of the teach pendant is you got to be able to manipulate where you need to go so we can up the speed or down the speed of that jog. So down below here is going to be your jog speed key. So you can override the full speed down to 50% all the way down to super fine which is moving literally thousands of an inch every single time you press that button. Other things is sometimes you need to know where you're at in the X, Y, and Z space. So that's going to be the coordinate keys. So the coordinate keys will help you figure out where you are in space. Now this may be in a different area than the teach pendant that you see here. It all depends on how the interface is actually set up. Other areas, you have the cursor keys. This allows you to scroll through menus, scroll through the program, get to exactly where you want to be in that program or line of code. Uh, on the actual screen, then, you'll have your status indicators, and this will tell you the status of is it ready to move, um, is it busy, is it moving, are you in step mode, um, what type of incremental or advanced movements are you going to do. If you notice that any of these icons are red, that means that there's a fault. If it's green, that means it's ready to go. Yellow means that you're in movement. The biggest part between the actual software and the actually holding the teach pendant is the dead man switch. So holding the actual teach pendant, you're going to have it on one hand and on the back side of the teach pendant, you're going to press in a three position lever. So the first position is completely decompressed. Uh, which means you're not pressing it at all. Then there's a middle switch, and then if you go all the way, it's going to trigger the dead man switch as well. The robot will not move if it is fully decompressed or fully pressed. It will only move when it's in that middle position. And this is a little bit tricky. This gets a little bit getting used to uh, getting the feel for where that second position is. Now there's all different keys and different functions and the only way they actually get used to it is actually to work with the teach pendant or practice on the actual teach pendant itself. Um, there's a whole list of what the keys do in the actual booklet or the manual or you can go online to actually see what each of the keys do.
All right, an actual robo guide, which we already learned how to create a cell, how to open the cell, how to look at where we have in the actual user interface. So we're, the first thing we do is we're going to turn on the teach pendant. So that's this little icon. And then you have the welcome screen for the teach pendant. So the first thing I like to do is I like to go to position. And this will tell us where we are at in X, Y, and Z space. So right now we're in joint mode. Joint mode has to do with angles. So we're at angle 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's 0 across the board. So we like to say this, this as a home position or a tool change position. Um, but this is going to be your starting position of your robot when you open up the actual program itself. All right, so let's navigate through our teach pendant. So right now uh, we're in our position data. So if we go to menu, menu allows you to change a in and out to set up certain parameters. You can also go to um, tool offsets and frame offsets, all these things that we're going to learn about later. So this will how you access those items, this, that, and that's the menu key. The next one is the select key. The select key will bring you to where all the programs are at. So this is where we're going to create, manipulate, and copy programs so that we can get our robot to do exactly what we want it to do. You'll notice that as we add and go into these different areas, these are going to be our function keys. So we have F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and then we can continue on past there. So those are going to be your function keys. So it looks a little bit different on the teach pendant. You'll actually see F1, F2, F3, F4, whereas here we have actual user interface keys. Edit will allow us to actually edit the program inside here. So if you created a program and you need to go back into it, you can easily go in edit. Data will hold certain key variables inside our memory space. So there's a couple different data points. Uh, right now this is a data register and then there's position registers, string registers, and a couple different registers. We'll talk more about this later on. The function key here will allow us, if you have a program already running in the background and then you want to try a new program, it may say or may fault that says program is already running. So what you need to do is go to the function and go to abort all, which means it clears everything out of the memory and it's ready to accept new commands. You have your numerical pad down below. You have your arrows upright, so you can see I can arrow down or I can arrow to the right to access the certain information that I need. Or if I go to menu, I can arrow down or I can arrow right if it allows me to do that. I have my joint movements. So if I go to my position, it'll show the actual position of our robot arm. If you remember, it's zero, zero, zero. So if I click shift, which means it's going to hold shift, just like if you will hold shift with your thumb, and then I press the X key here, and we need to clear the, sh the actual fault up here by hitting reset first, if you notice that there was a fault. So if I hit shift again, and now I press the X key, you can see we're rotating on joint one, and if I press it again, and if I press this one, notice how the shift key is actually being pressed automatically. So you don't have to hit shift every single time you hit the X or Y or Z or any other of the joints. So you can see position number two, moving up and down, rotating of the wrist here, rotating of the tool, and then the rotation of the tool itself. So I can rotate and manipulate where I need to be just by pressing this little icon right here. Now I can speed up that motion or slow down the motion by these two keys right here. So I can page down, which allows me to go down, and that brings me down by 5%. Now if I hold shift and then click that button, it brings me down by 10% or down to, once you get down past 50, then it brings you down even further to 5%, to 1%, and then to fine, and then very fine. Very fine only allows you to just click in minute amount of numbers. You'll see that most of these won't even change until you click it a couple times because you're going literally fractions of an inch, um, fractions of a fractions of an inch actually. So if I don't hold shift, it goes up by increments of one, 
till it gets to 10 and then it goes up by 5. Now once I hold shift then it goes up by increments of larger amounts on there. So I can speed up and slow down. So what I like to do when I'm moving, I like to move to the general area fairly quickly and then I slow down the speed to get that fine tune movement so that I can get to exact position that I need it to be. So that's the teach pendant in a nutshell. Uh, so we will learn a lot more about the different functions inside the teach pendant and what they do a little bit more as we progress through 